<laughs> Should we talk a little bit about Zika virus since it's a current we could. event at we, the moment? We could, and, yes. and it's it got this curious and unexpected, I guess? Totally unexpected. This is a virus which, as far as we could tell, was a benign, caused a benign infection starting in the 40s when we first found evidence of it infecting people in Africa and then Asia. Started to cause a few outbreaks uh, in uh, French Polynesia, Micronesia, but really a mild rash associated disease. Not a lot of infections, as far as we could tell, but it's a member of a family of viruses called Flavi viruses. And in that family are yellow fever virus, uh, dengue virus, oh, West, West nasty Nile, family. nasty viruses. Um, and yellow fever virus, of course, could infect your central nervous system. Right. And um, as far as we know, uh, Zika was innocuous. And then, of course, the big outbreak in Brazil, and now a association with uh, congenital birth defects, as well as some other serious syndromes. So this was totally unexpected because no virus of that family has previously been shown oh. to cross the placenta and cause uh, birth damage. So this is uh, not only neural, but, but developmental. Exactly. I mean, are there other yes. viruses that are specifically... Well, I guess I remember... Isn't, was it rubella? Exactly, or, yes. Yeah, I re, uh, this is sort of strange, I guess. But I remember as a young child, I think I was seven or eight years old, I contacted whatever, I guess, rubella. Rubella. It's a rash disease, yes. yeah. And, um, and the benefit of that was that all the young girls in the neighborhood on my street mm -hmm. were brought in for me to kiss them with the hope that they would catch it because it was fairly benign as a childhood disease, but disastrous if you caught it as a pregnant woman. Was this your idea? Yeah. <laughs> See, I could have been a virologist. <laughs> you should have, you should have. <laughs> no, this was apparently some sort of folk idea, yeah. more or less, yeah, yeah. but it's well, true. I mean, I was a exists. vaccine, essentially. Uh, right? I was are, an inoculator. People are talking so about Zika speak. parties now, same yeah. idea. Yeah. So you get, the problem with that is... Zika you know, parties, really? Yeah, I've heard it. You've, Just remember you heard it here first. You don't, I hope you're first. You don't <laughs> know the chicken pox parties, uh, measles parties, Zika yeah. parties. The problem is you don't know the long-term sequelae of getting naturally infected. It's preferable to get a vaccine, okay, yeah. which will yeah. not cause disease. Of course, we don't have one for Zika. And, and so in the absence, people are thinking about doing that. But since Zika is so new, we don't know long-term sequelae. For example, Ebola infection. We used to think if you were fortunate to recover, you'd be okay. But now after the outbreak in Africa, we see long-term effects of the virus causing all sorts of defects that we didn't know about before. Well, then you have, I mean, there are cases where viruses, like chicken pox, for example, you get it, you're over it, you're now, quote, immune to chicken pox, but it mm -hmm. sits in your nerve endings, right? That's right. It can cause shingles later exactly. on, right? Exactly. So right. it can remain dormant. I mean, how many viruses are there that do this dormancy thing? Well, about a dozen of the herpes viruses that infect all of us, herpes simplex, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus. We all Is have these. driving you as crazy as... We all have these. <laughs> well, you know, my students in my course say after they take my course, uh, they don't eat, um, they, they don't do all kinds of behavior because I scare them uh, about doing so many things. But in fact, we are all relatively, you remember that, right? We, all, we are all relatively healthy because we have great immune systems. Yeah. But there, these herpes viruses infect you within your first decade of life and the genomes, the DNA remains with you and periodically the viruses replicate right. For herpes, you may have a fever sore, maybe not, and that's how you transmit it to another person. It's a brilliant strategy, right? That's one way of a virus for spreading throughout the population. Right, right. But, you know, these new viruses, when these viruses were all discovered, we had no idea what the long-term consequences yeah. were. And the same with Zika nowadays, because we don't have enough of a history. So the idea of infecting yourself is probably not a good idea. Nevertheless, many people are traveling to areas where the virus is present and circulating. They're getting infected. I think as long as you are not pregnant or thinking about getting pregnant, you'll probably be okay. okay. You know, yeah. there, there are a small percentage of what we believe are uh, neurological problems associated with infection, but very small compared to the bulk of cases. So again, unless you are pregnant or planning to be pregnant, it's, it's okay. So, so I guess this is where virology borders to some extent on epidemiology sure, as well, absolutely. right? I mean, so, so not only is the biology of the virus important, I assume that that also dictates a great deal about the way it's likely to spread. Can we make predictions? 